very good morning to our honorable principal sir dr mn deshmukh head of the mechanical dr deepak kurana and our prestigious speaker today here dr saith fur danwar i feel very glad to introduce him again our fourth day on our fourth day of faculty development program dr fahad have already covered basics of cfd at the day first in our same program and today he is going to cover some advancement in cfd including fluid structure interaction and turbulence here i want to share my own feeling that uh, in my whole life i never saw 15 page cv like uh, professor fahad have there are so many awards workshops research papers projects publications national international conferences such a huge and variety experience he have one more thing i want to introduce to our participants the question and answer session will be at the last of this lecture so please keep your questions and have patience at last you can ask directly by the raising hand through the app or can write in the chat box so uh, so to so the first part of this today's uh, lecture which i am going to deliver is uh, we call is a advanced cfd and uh, how to get an optimized to develop an optimized solver for incompressible uh, flows which can be laminar or turbulent flow so this work uh, i uh, so this there are two persons who are, who are involved in this which is one is hamid hamid is my phd scholar and uh, we developed this uh, in uh, and he is registered at iit delhi so so we are have a active coll collaboration with the iit delhi department of applied mechanics and he is uh, uh, were one of the students who has uh, who is doing it so we uh, we developed this solver in in collaboration with him and uh, so he have we have uh, included i have included his name over here so the first part uh, so before going into uh, uh, how so solver was optimized uh, we will uh, discuss it why uh, why why a optimized solver is needed so let us uh, discuss that first so as you know the turbulence is basically has a uh, has the characteristic feature of a turbulent flow is that it has too many eddy sizes that means the size of one eddy as you can see in a picture if uh, i don't know if it, whether it is uh, clear to all of you or not uh, it shows that the size one of the eddies is of the same order or uh, this is a flow past an aerofoil at a high angle of attack so so you can see that uh, there is an aerofoil and there are a lot of flows structures which are going so the airfoil so one of the eddies is basically of the order of the airfoil size and some are bigger also if you consider this as an eddy uh, the other part as an eddy so that will be a bigger than the airfoil size and some of the air and uh, and the airfoil uh, you can see that there are pictures that there are some eddies which are much 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 much, much smaller than the edge of the airfoil so you can see that the, the large amount of disc discrepancy which comes into the flow is that suppose you take an ari uh, flow or a flat plate which i always give as an example um, of reynolds number 10 raised to power 5 so it will have an eddy or a vortex of size of 40 40 uh, mm and it will also have a size of a vortex of size of 0.01 mm just a uh, just to get you an idea so 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 the size of a vortex vary from 0.01 mm to 40 mm so the the uh, the ray ratio the ratio of the uh, variation of size of the eddy is from uh, 400 times 4000 times so you can see that the difficulty in calculation of that now since every eddy is a smaller in size so the time scale associated to that flow is also very very small in nature so that so that is the amount of difficulty which we are trying to handle 
just an example so that any turbulent flow is basically comprised of a large scale vortices which are bigger in size and some smaller scale vortices which are much 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 smaller than size so the examples are very much we can see that uh, the aircraft uh, the rockets whose uh, wake you see uh, which is which strikes on the ground has created so much sizes of the flow an example now there is an example of a jet engine flow also available and uh, you can see that uh, now there, there is an example of a reacting flow where the anisotropic turbulence is there so the, so the frame the flame which is propagating is dying dying in turbulence uh, a, a flow um, of the uh, the flame which is propagating is causing turbulence uh, in the flow, in the system now another example of this is the you can see that the first picture is of a smoke track yani the the smoke which is coming out of the chimney so at the ab initio if you take tell to recognize the, from the uh, from the picture as, as you can see that the size of the eddy at the the exit of the chimney is very small but as it goes and decays into the uh, into the aerospace uh, into the into the the space surrounding it the the vortices size grows and grows and grows which if you see uh, from that so the the size of the vortex which is at the end of the first picture that is the smoke stack uh, is is of the same order as of the chimney so you can you can understand my point okay, why it is different now the another example as is is the is a sound uh, is a, a sandstorm which has been taken in, in iraq so this is these are example where environment where the turbulence is there you again you can again see that large amount of it is much bigger than the size of the uh, the sandstorm is much bigger than the size of the whole uh, car or bus or much much larger than that then there is an example of a vortex shedding from uh, Uh, from uh, an island yeah, there is a nasa picture which has been given you can see that the first is the uh, uh, the uh, first uh, first part of a uh, white uh, structure is basically the island and from there the vortices are shed being shed alternatively as you can see and again the size grows so you can see that how bigger a vortex would have been so that it has been uh, it, it, it is much bigger than the size of the island itself now again another example is the uh, is from the saint helen uh, uh, of a volcano eruption again you can see that there is a lot of sizes involved in this so the turbulence which why it is important difficult to solve is it is multi scale that means it has smaller eddies also and larger eddies these eddies basically mix dissipate and create a chaotic flow so which is again very difficult to oh, difficult to uh, survive now the important thing for for an uh, for an engineer or for a uh, for a flow flow dynamist is that the statistics which are there in a turbulent flow is again is well defined so so people started to use these statistics and try to simulate these flows again the equations are simple it is it it obeys physical laws of governing the fluid fluid flow and everything is same now this is the equation this is just nothing but a second law of fluid mechanics where air, uh, air acceleration is equal to force into mass force upon upon mass now how the computation uh, fluid dynamics come is my voice or totally audible hello yes yes Ah, okay so so you can see that the the challenge um, in simulating these flows is uh, so, so the role of the cfd is that the, it helps you in uh, in using using rans or other different approaches which are going used to, which are used in solving uh, fluid mechanics uh, with the and uh, uh, in in a special packages sometimes we use specialized codes sometimes we do not use specifies specialized code so now if you uh, go on with that is that again as i have showed you that there is a lot of scales so if the reynolds number is 10 to the power 3 for an example 
the size, the smallest size, which is governed by the Kolmogorov's uh, length scale and time scale, is for, an, for a representative figure, you, I have shown you only three stages of this. So if 10 is to power 3, DNS is possible. Now, if the, uh, if the highest flow is 10 to power 7, where you go into very, 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 very small size, from this smaller size to that bigger size. So the DNS is not possible because the computational effort required is RE cube. So if, if 10 to the power 3 is the Reynolds number, then the computational effort is, uh, is of the order of 10 to the power 9. But if the Reynolds number is 10 to the power 7, the computational effort involved is, is around 10 to the power 21. So this is the problem of simulating the flow. Now, what an engineer does is that we use a mean flow equation or the filtered equation to simulate these flows. What are that? So uh, there are two types of methodologies which are uh, uh, adopted. One is the statistical approach, which is called as RANS decomposition. I'm not going, going to give you detail of RANS or LES. I'm just trying to give you the overview of that. So RANS approach, uh, or you use a filtered approach. Now, if you, if you use a RANS approach, what you are doing, you are, you are either, you are basically simulating the flow of, um, uh, you're simulating using the average or the statistical methods to simulate the flow. So statistically, what we use is, is that suppose you have a, this kind of a turbulence, where you can see that there is a la large amount of uh, uh, small scales which are involved. Yeah, that means, but this small scales can do have a mean value. So we try to write down this equation, this, this, any instantaneous velocity in terms of its mean and its, its filter, its uh, fluctuating part, which is, which you can see that. So Reynolds equation, you write a mean in its fluctuating part and you, you fill, you you put this back into the uh, the uh, uh, Navier-Stokes equation. This decomposition. This was given by for um, uh, Reynolds to use into. So he said that we will use a sinusoidal and all those things. So here you see that. So it it gives you an extra Reynolds stress, which is u, u j prime into u k prime, which is at the end of the bottom of the slide. Yeah. So that is called as the Reynolds problem or the closure problem because you do not have an equation for for simulating this part now if you use that so now the whole uh, whole whole thing becomes uh, is like that uh, so, so if you have used it instantaneous equation you have four variables you have four uh, equations and four you have four unknowns so you can solve the equation so four unknowns would be velocities all the three velocity and pressure Number of unknown equations are uh, mass, momentum, uh, and continuity. Continuity can be then decomposed into the pressure equation, which is called as Poisson equation. Uh, so now, if you use the RANS approach, you basically write down uh, phi, or that means any variable into mean and its fluctuating part. Now, this fluctuating parts, these red uh, figures in available in the uh, slide shows you that these are the basically the extra fluctuating parts you need to simulate. Now this, the, they gives, this is rated in tensor form. If you expand this, they give six more unknowns. So that makes 10 unknowns. So if they are 10 unknowns uh, and you have, but you have equations only four. Now this is so, this is basically called as the closure problem of turbulence. Now there's just a, uh, I'm not uh, going, so, so we write down uh, turbulent models for these uh, equations uh, in terms of mean flow quantities and simulate the flow. So this is the traditional approach. Now there is a one anecdote uh, which was given by uh, Feynman. Uh, so Feynman in his, uh, um, uh, his magazine, he, say, he said that the, uh, when he will go to the God, he will... Uh, um, he will ask uh, God that uh, well, why, why he will ask two questions to God. Why first is the turbulence and the second is uh, about uncertainty. He said that he is pretty sure that the God will be able to answer the second one, but not the first first one. So th that is basically the difficulty with the turbulence is that since it has a defined 
mathematical equation to solve it but because of the inherent scales involved in that you are not able to solve so so that is the whole issue so what we do is that we solve or model the equation in this uh, in this flat range of uh, energy spectrum which has been shown so this is a energy spectrum in terms of wave number so wave number represents the you can uh, example as the size so we want uh, everything in this strain so the so the so the decay part we leave it to model as the close the model as low closes with this so just to give you an idea uh, this is slightly old data so old data so the world record is basically by an earth simulator in japan which was 1.08 petaflops it goes only till uh, 10 raised to power 7 i think reynolds number so 6 or 7 6 6 so it can only simulate 10 raised to power 6 so that is the whole problem now i will go to if you if you have any question at this point we can discuss and then i will start how to optimize the code uh, dear participant if you have any question uh, you can raise the hand at this point if someone is having any question please raise the hand okay so so yeah i think we can continue yeah okay so let us continue uh so so this sorry so the so the, the dns code which we developed uh, uses uh, the numerical methodology of three parts uh that is smack uh, gm res that is a uh, smack is basically the pressure variation and the crank so so no, normally in every code um, every fluid mechanics book these methodologies are given so i will part uh, i will focus my work uh, on the second part more in this uh, in this uh, in this part which is not uh, normally discussed how to use the optimal or develop an optimized code so the dimensionless uh, uh, form of the equations are the simple we are trying to simulate only a uh, canonical flows that means either we'll do some channel or we'll do, do some pipe do those kind of figures flow we will do right now so our code which we developed is a finite difference fourth order code uh, which is accurate fourth order accurate uh, the diffusion terms are implicitly treated uh, Uh, like crank nicholson we have used crank nicholson method for that uh, fluid solution is through uh, pressure correction equation or a smack which is modified smack and uh, we have used a non uniform grid so you can see that uh, we have uh, done a small uh, <coughs> small flow chart which say that we first uh, basically predict the velocity then we predict the pressure then we correct the value it's a predictor corrector uh, scheme Uh, so we, when we correct the value whether the convergence is obtained or not if there is not then we do it again so again uh, we do uh, we do we do a pressure correction again if it, the convergence available then we go to update the velocity pressure and velocity field go to the uh, next step if it is not uh, then uh, if it is if it doesn't ends over there if, if we have to go to the next time level so you go back to the you again predict the velocity field pressure field and then correct the value so this cycle goes on and on so predictor equation uh, you can see that we have written over here where uh, you can see the the star is basically the prediction values Uh, velocities and uh, velocity prediction velocities and uh, we have taken this uh, the second term is basically the viscous uh, vis viscosity part or the diffusion equation that in turn to the left side and have, uh, so this part is basically has to be calculated on the left uh, lhs is has to be calculated and the rhs is all on the nth part so you can see that there are two parts which have been uh, the viscous part which is del square upon r e del square u has been bifurcated into two parts so you can see this from this equation these uh, after del p 
there is a uh, one over re del square u. So del square u is basically the diffusion term. Now we have or the viscous term. We have bifurcated this term into two parts, which is known value, which is n, or based on n, that means the explicitly we can calculate this part, and we uh, we project project this half part of the crank Nicholson. So this is the basically the crank Nicholson way of discretization um, using the crank Nicholson uh, scheme, uh, and now we correct this velocity. With the help of uh, the, the corrector step is the divergence free velocity field at the new time level, where u n plus one is the new time level velocity. You calculate you, you use this to calculate this. Uh, so star velocity at this step has been evaluated on the first step. You use this on for the to the right step, and then you can use uh, n and n plus one values. So so here pressure is n plus one. So you you then you use the expression of subtracting. Un plus one into Un minus one, so this is the correction field which is being evolved. And step three and step four is basically you use the so so here. So what happens is had that you basically calculate P prime from here, supply it to <laughs> expression three, where from uh, and you get Un plus one. So n plus one is the Un plus one is the velocity at the new time level. And pressure P once we have get got P prime, P n we already know, so P n plus one then can be evaluated. So that is how basically you simulate this. Uh, since we are using a collocation scheme to maintain the uh, the uh, the monotonicity, so Rai and Cho as discretization has been used in to discretize del dot u. Uh, momentum interpolation is used. And uh, we have solved this whole algebraic set of equation through uh, GM rest. So this is called uh, this is a solver for solving solving uh, solving the set of algebraic equation. And uh, this is called as the generalized minimum residual scheme. There are more solver. You can use it. Use P prime. You you can use SMAC. You sorry. Uh, you can use uh, bi conjugate gradient uh, by CG stab. Or you can use the SIP, uh, or you can use uh, uh, any solution solver like for for an algebraic equation. But this is a fast one, so we have done this. Okay, so now uh, how to optimize this code? Now, since we are using a um, C plus uh, plus uh, as a language, uh, it has been tested that. Uh, uh, to to have a, have a fast array operation, we uh, you need a, a far, C plus plus is small slow in for doing array uh, operations. So so we use a, a library which is called Bits Blit C plus plus library, and this is this basically helps you in uh, uh, representing the object oriented way for arrays and matrix and vectors. It also has a fast uh, uh, computational has a lesser computational burden for loop calculations, and it helps in very large amount of fast, uh, large amount of uh, array handling. Now, uh, to uh, so for any user, everybody. So, so what we did is that we we made it as a generalized code, and in that case, in a generalized code, you only have to give inputs. So, to handle the user inputs. We use a YML input file. So here you just need to give that like delta t. So dt you say, and is colon and value. So then dt directly once you say that okay read dt. So that means you have the value. So if it is not uh, necessary that it, it should be written as the first step or second or third or fourth part, you can uh, easily use it, uh, easily uh, load this, and it has uh, it has been very very fast. Uh, the third thing is that we have we have used a, a parallel implementation on the, in this because again as I, as I have told you, so so this is for on a 500 processors or a, a my code which I use for uh, for for uh, simulating pipe flow or square duct flow, uh, it runs for 20 days on uh, around uh, no, around 100 processors it runs for 20 days. It's a long problem, so it's, it's a faster. It needs a faster interface, but for doing any DNS flow, you will be needing fast, uh, fast. So we have done parallelization through 
through message passing interface that is way we call it as uh, mpi uh, in this uh, we have to use domain to, we have to decompose the domain and then the second issue is how to communicate between the two processors and what is the way parallel way of getting an input output so so the, so so you have to find an optimized solution for all of these now the first part is there can be two types of ways to parallelize any flow which is uh, which is called as an open mp or an mpi so if an open mp processor is there so the first figure that we have a shared memory and you you distribute uh, the processes to different different processors so process 1 can be given to one processor process 2 is to other processor plus 3 is to other processor plus process 4 is the but the memory yeah, that is the ram is is basically a shared so this shared so so this kind of uh, decomposition is called as a share mpi open mp decomposition this is not uh, that fast as compared to mpi but uh, it is very very suitable to compressible flows so compressible flows it uh, it helps you in compressible flows now the second part which is the traditional decomposition which is called as an mpi so message passing interface decomposition here you have a processor and it has a separate memory processor and it has a separate memory processor with a separate memory these are then combined through the message passing interconnection so so once you have to have a data uh, from this so 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 for so what happens if, uh, in an open mp so the process which has been executed it is on the shared part so you just have to take the data from here and then go back but here it, it doesn't have a dedicated ram associated to that so any processor uh, doesn't have a dedicated ram here you have a dedicated ram which makes the process much faster but there is a backlog there is a uh, there is a cost which has to be paid is that you have to have a interconnection so you have to you have to ask when the data has to be shared now the second part is that you decompose the domain now domain is fluid domain is like a square duct square uh, shaped uh, or a rectangular shape there can be three ways to do it one is called slice decomposition the other is called uh, pencil decomposition the third is called as a cubic decomposition now in slice decomposition you just have horizontal slices so you have if you have uh, five um, processors then you have you sh you have five domains to decompose so obviously for a for one decom for one one processor you will have much more points than compared to the other part now the second part is is the decomposition so we call it as a 1d decomposition so you are de uh, decomposing it in only in one direction not in all directions now the third second is basically the pencil decomposition where as the graphic says that you have you are de decompose in decompose the domain into two two parts two dimensions like x and y and z is remain free so z is remain free so you again have much lesser compared to the points as compared to the decomposition and you can use much more processor so again if you use four parts then you can use a similar amount of z direction mesh will be there but you can you can reduce the x and y component meshes now the third which we use right now is uh, the code is uh, is a cubic decomposition where you can decompose in any three direction so all directions have been decomposed so is, this is the fastest way to compute compute now in uh, so uh, so here is the decomposition domain and the red uh, uh, red um, part is basically the point on which it, you want to solve now it's a five point stencil so it requires data from the right hand side from the upper from the uh, left hand side and and the, from the down side so downside data node we require we require the top side data node we require the right side data node data node and we require the left side data node to solve it now if you decompose this into different parts uh, suppose you different uh, decompose this into four parts uh, you can see that some parts do not require this this the, they don't have this node but one of them part will have a node at the uh, interface 
Now, since you, you have decomposed into four parts, as shown in the figure B, uh, you can see that one part, which is which the data which has to be used, is on is the in the processor four. Now, to how to uh, basically uh, do this is that you insert halos or patches into into this. So now you so this is four 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 four. Now this is this this is this is a sixteen by sixteen mesh. Okay. Now this four four by four parts four four in x direction four in y direction. You can see that in the C part with the halos. So there is a increase in uh, num patching side. So gray is basically a patch up part. Okay. Now if you if you increase this part, there will be a certain uh, loss. So there will be one node which is left empty, uh, in, empty. So you can see that to solve this this data, we transfer this data part into the patch part. So you can see that. So you four part are there. So there is a data from here. So this has been transferred to this part. The, so here you can see that there is a data over here. So so you can see from here this data from the right hand side. This data has been transferred to the gray part. In the on the, in the D part, so that that is how the communication is being done. Uh, I hope I hope it is clear to all of you. Now uh, to optimize this code, we 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 did did a lot of um, uh, thinking before we going into this kind of a hardware kind of cell cell system, and what type of this use. So we use a parallel file system, which is called uh, which is basically an MPI OPI format. We use an HDF file for format, which basically uses uh, we we can we can create we can add the data from any part of the HDF file. So any processor we want to see the data, we just we can fetch that data. So so that is how the hardware the storage file system is being used. So we are basically using a parallel file system, and uh, so this makes uh, the the process very fast. So you can see that we have. Uh, then we try to see that how the uh, analysis, uh, the parallel performance goes, and you can see that uh, as the speed up, speed up is basically the single processor time to the multi processor time, and the efficiency is the speed up achieved by the ideal speed up. Ideal speed up is all is the um, the dashed line as you can see. Now the ideal speed up is always uh, much larger. So at 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 the start, when you decompose this from one to four processor or eight processor, it is always very very fast. But you can see that the uh, the rate of increase is basically a linear, not uh, uh, which we get is the linear speed up, which is not uh, uh, which is very very good, because normally sometimes you get basically a a converging uh, kind of this, and where you go on and on, and then you have a certain. So, but we have tested. So, right now, I don't know why uh, my student only put for sixteen. We have ninety-six. We have tested for around five hundred processors, and this work, works perfectly fine. We get always a linear speed up, but somehow, obviously. So, what I did was uh, we did a when with, when you get a because there is a communication also over there. So, when the communication time increases. Uh, Increases then a processor time, then it it goes you it gives you a decay in uh, uh, in speed up, and that happens when you, for my calculation, if you if single processor has more than eight points on one node to solve, more than that, uh, more than eight points, it will always give you a speed up. So once it falls below eight, it will no never give you a speed up. So that is what I I deciphered from this uh, these parts. Now this is an example of a laminar flow in a square duct, which we simulated for L by H 100, and uh, you can see that uh, we validated for the DNS of uh, and the analytical solution. Uh, so you can see that our uh, work uh, is uh, uh, very well matched with the experimental of Goldstein and uh, analytical solution of Hahn and the DNS solution. So DNS is our uh, analytical and experimental and numerical solution of all those peoples. So, so this is the validation of a developing uh, laminar flow. So it's a long duct where the flow is being developed. So, so, so boundary conditions are different as compared to the uh, peri periodic uh, flows. 
Now, this is a this is an example of a periodic duct flow, where the flow is coming from the as you see in the flow. Now, you can see that uh, I have uh, uh, shown you in our first uh, uh, so first lecture is that sometimes we use a periodic boundary condition to simulate this. So, periodic boundary condition is the is the domain after which is characteristic of a turbulent flow, uh, where, which repeats itself after a lot of some gap. So this, uh, you can see that the axial length is taken as a four pi h. It's a pi. So that means uh, it will it will it will again repeat itself after four pi h. So we why to simulate the whole duct which is long it's in a fully developed turbulence? Then you use this kind of a boundary condition. It shortens your domain by a large amount. And we, to maintain the flow, we use a external. Uh, we we or everybody use basically a variable or or a constant pressure gradient that acts as a flow domain. Now uh, this is the validation for Ari Tau uh, 300. So this will come corresponds to uh, 5000 uh, bulk Reynolds number. So Ari Tau is a friction Reynolds number. So you can see that our DNS. Uh, uh, where, compares well with the DNS of uh, Gravelakis and with the experimental results of cheese right now uh, on the uh, right side where mean secondary flows are shown you can see that there are there is an eight vortex pattern so which we will discuss later or here so you can see that uh, this is a, a time average data and it shows it shows that uh, in every in a square duct, basically, if you will, uh, if you will have a look at the uh, this, uh, these uh, velocity vectors, you can see that there is one vortex over here, one vortex over here. So on all corners, there are two vortices. That means an eight vortex pattern is there. So this is this was this is the this is called as a secondary motion, a frontal secondary motion, which is an intermittent in nature. So some everywhere in the flow domain, you will not find it. Somewhere you will find, somewhere you will not find it. So it has two states of flow. One is the eight vortex pattern, which we show you, show you, and there is another vortex, four vortex pattern, which is there. So this is the mean secondary flow, which has been shown. Now, <laughs> this is a this is an instantaneous effect of Reynolds number, which tried to simulate uh, Ari Tau 100, 160. This is friction Reynolds number. It's higher than. So you can see that in the uh, 100 Reynolds number. Uh, uh, there is a in in these flows there there is a mushroom like pattern which are coming out. I will show you the movie at the end of the slide uh, where there is a good amount of. So let us let us uh, see whether the movie is there or not. Uh, I think the movie is not here, but I will show you uh, in the end of the slide. Uh, slide show. Okay, so now you can see that the effect of the mean secondary pattern. As you can see, that laminar is a marginal turbulence. That means you, you the turbulence ends at Ari Tau 60, Ari Tau 100, and you can see that this uh, the core is is towards the center. The flow more the flow is the flow is more towards the center, and the the as you increase the Reynolds number, it goes to the sides. Now there is a marked difference in the URMS uh, turbulence intensity uh, over here so you can see that uh, the blue line goes uh, very very different from the other two lines now here this is the distribution of the normals and shear stresses so what why I am showing you is here is this so once you have the data you need to analyze it uh, using post processing so this is one way of, so 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 then you have to consider to collect the statistics and they, these statistics have been connected for our uh, in the state statistical stationary regime it has been considered uh, we, we took around 4000 snaps to to generate these uh, velocity plots uh, so these these uh, and then we do averaging and so there's a lot of statistics has to be shown for a turbulent flow and a lot of uh, mathematics has to be done to get meaningful uh, information out from that so this is like uh, Reynolds stress stress and then we do this is instantaneous flow from mushroom types of structure you can see that there is a mushroom uh, kind of structure which goes into the flow as you as the time changes it is goes into the flow 
so so you can see another quadrant analysis where how sweep and ejections take place you can see that the re tau 300 shows shows uh, uh, shows that this classical u prime v prime um, quadrature flows uh, where uh, turbulent flow is there and uh, uh, and re tau 100 there is very much uh, very less amount of obligate obligacy is there as you increase the Reynolds number the obligacy in or the dependence in q2 and 4 q4 is much more ejection is, is much more and uh, that is how it goes now we we calculated the busting event by using a beta analysis as you see that as the re is increased the busting events so or busting frequency uh, increases so that means the more and more turbulent flow is being created so we use again the current structures for detecting in this so we used a, a swirling strength criteria lambda lambda ci and uh, we we got these uh, hairpin mushrooms in these flows so then uh, you can see that these hair plume hair uh, pin vortices are first uh, oh, first uh, so this is the sweeping part so it's extend so it had it is it is there at the start which which is very very small and a horizontal kind of a streak and then from the streak it 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 it, it is being pulled up so you can see that the the vortex there how the more and more they pulled up is there and after the pull up there is a breakage of this now uh, you can see that uh, you can see that from here the the we, we recovered the uh, classical minus 5 by 3 uh, spectrum for the turbulent uh, re 160 and 1300 but uh, in k k minus 2 that is the did uh, the for the uh, minimal flow that is uh, re tau 60 or re tau 100 we got a k minus two that is called as the so so this is the spectrum for the um, uh, for the developing flow a transitionary flow so re tau 600 is, is not a fully developed flow but a transitionary flow okay so this uh, turbulent part uh, presentation is over if if anyone has any queries uh, at this stage he can ask on in, on the turbulent flow and this is the generation of this then we will do go to fsi Hello. Sir, a question came in chat box. Yeah, yeah, please, please go ahead. Uh, let me find. Uh, this is a question from Dr. Naveen Sharma. Yeah. Uh, sir, can we use critical point theory to find the critical structures? That is the question. Uh, I am not fam familiar with the critical point theory. So, uh, if uh, somebody can explain me, then we can discuss the critical point. Uh, so, I am not familiar with the critical point theory. Uh, so, probably he refers to the. Uh, uh, if he is available, he can. Uh, we can discuss uh, here. Um, uh, doc Dr. Naveen, say something. You can raise hand so that we can unmute yourself. I have unmuted Dr. Naveen. Or we can take uh, at the end uh, if uh, others will be active. So we can take the question answer at the end. Okay. 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 So let us go to the next uh, part of the presentation. Uh, so, uh, so one of the way uh, the flows which I am interested in basically the uh, fluid structure interaction. So one is the turbulence and one is the the fluid structure interaction, uh, which I am interested. In. So, so why uh, just to give you a uh, brief account why is uh, fluid structure interaction important? Is that on the left side you could see a, a coronary hard coronary flow of a hard left ventricle, and from that you have associated uh, arteries with this. So there's, a, there's an example of CFD of a coronary heart flow. Mm -hmm. So here the heart is basically uh, again a vibrating stuff. Uh, then there is a flying of flapping wings. So, so wings of birds and insects. 
both are uh, of feathers. So when your you slide is not. It is not uh, visible. Uh -huh. It's the old last slide of the last presentation. Okay, okay, okay. Let me uh, probably the new share has to be given. Now it's okay. Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, in our lab, uh, we do uh, fluid structure interaction also. So why is fluid structure interaction important? Because uh, any flow which is inside a uh, IC engine, uh, where because the piston is uh, moving, so the domain of the fluid flow is also changing your time. So that is this, that is one of the uh, examples of there. Then there's a effect of uh, flapping words or wings. So the words of uh, bird, uh, wings of uh, birds or insects are of uh, very, very uh, flexible, uh, flexible wings are there. And uh, they are affected by the, the aerodynamic forces which are, comes onto, onto these birds and they, they deform. And the effect of that goes back to the fluid part and the flow changes. Uh, even for the swimming, of swimming uh, the fins are there also which are very, very uh, deformable. Then there is a change, phase change phenomenon, solidification flows, where solidification is being going on uh, inside the, uh, in, 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 a, in a casting kind of environment or any so solidification is this. So, so there is a, after in a certain, when it is cooled, certain phases of, uh, at any instant of time, certain phases will be solid and certain fluid phases will be fluid. Then there is a, a flow of a bubble inside a fluid. So bubble is going here and there, and but the but the interface inside the bubble, flow inside the bubble is in air, and outside that is the, there is a fluid. So and then, then there is an artery of for the heart flow simulation. So these arteries contract and goes back, contract and goes back. So these all, and then there is an example of a vortex in vibration of bluff bodies. So where the flow is uh, like of a flow singing of wires, uh, where the wires are basically moved. With the help of, uh, with because of the fluid uh, forces which come comes on to that. Uh, so if we, uh, you are familiar with the, uh, so there's, there's an example of a Burj Khalifa. Uh, there's a very tall building in Dubai. So because of the this uh, tall structure, there's a lot of force which comes on to the uh, structure, and the structure could have could move. To stop those movement of structure. There is, an, uh, there is an artificial mesh which is being created at the top of the surface to, to, re to reduce, the, uh, uh, reduce the fluid, uh, fluid forces acting on it. There is an example of, a, uh, I don't know how much of you, how many of you uh, uh, own a car. Uh, um, so my car, which was uh, earlier, my earlier car, which was uh, Estello from Maruti, so it uh, when I start to go to a higher speed, it started to I, it feels that it is going to vibrate. So at uh, above 80 uh, kilometer per hour, it starts to vibrate. It looks like that it is going to vibrate. So that effect was basically produced by the uh, uh, by the vortices which comes at the back of the uh, back of the car, and uh, and the vortex being shed and going out, shed and going out. So it's basically creating some kind of a vibration. So to stop that, uh, Maruti introduced in Wagonar, uh, uh, or or in uh, now it is very common, the spoilers. Spoilers are, have been introduced for that. So these are very very important flows. So, in if you if you have a look at uh, uh, the uh, the commercial CFD codes which are involved. They, they solve fluid structure and interaction in two ways, which is called a one-way FSI, and then they call it as a two-way FSI. So the one-way FSI, which was uh, literally for two years back, uh, fluent could only solve a one-way FSI. Uh, in this, we, you first analyze the fluid flow, you create uh, forces with, with respect to time, and then you put these forces, uh, store these uh, forces with respect to time, and then you, and then you put this, these forces this, this loading of this, this uh, time, variational time force on the structure and uh, get the mold shapes and all those things. Structure deformation, one my criteria of that. But the important thing which has to be noted is that you do not solve fluid and structure at the same time. 
the two way fsi which is a recent addition to the uh, in the fem uh, ansys splint solver is the that both fluid and structure uh, equations are solved at an instant now <laughs> why are they difficult to simulate because uh, the difficulty in stable uh, solution is because of the stability of the coupling approach so one of the difficulty is this second is the robustness of the solution strategy now see um, in a time in a fluid flow those who are familiar with the fluid flow phenomena uh, know that the, for the non dimensional time normally in a fluid flow simulation is uh, tends to be minus 3 or minus 4 but those who are familiar with the structure solution su structural flows know that if you you can do it go it into the time domain uh, from the frequency domain to time domain and you can sim simulate for larger amount of time so that means uh, you can go to uh, you can use one or two non dimensional time also over there so that means there is a lot of a uh, lot of amount of uh, uh, scales involved in this flow so one solution that is solid fluid solid part structure part has a different scale of flow and the other the fluid flow part has a different scale of flow so to have a combined strategy for solving this create singularity because uh, and you know that after all it is an algebra algebraic equation has to be solved and because uh, the matrix a which will be generated by this coupled approach um, will uh, will be of um, highly uh, of very high condition number so that is the difficulty of solving the second part is the implementation of the boundary condition or the tracking of the boundary motion uh, which is there so all the examples which i have shown the boundary is basically moved is uh, is basically moving that means the fluid flow domain or the structural domain of solution is basically changing with time so 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 to, to the free surface or the surface or the interface of the solid fluid interface has to be tracked with time then there is something called as the geometric conservation law which has to be satisfied when you track the boundary condition so that are these are the few issues which is involved now the two way fsi if i uh, like to um, uh, approach is uh, there are two ways to solve a uh, fsi one is called as a monolithic approach and uh, the other is called as the partition approach the mo monolithic approach is that you create a you 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 create a, a methodology Uh, where you solve fluid and structure equations at the same go at the same go that means you create a, the coefficient matrix which has solid parts also which has fluid parts also and you solve it this obviously has is the best approach possible um and because and and this will give you a, a large amount of uh, um, Uh, conservation properties guarantees unconditional stability uh, you can uh, have admissible time size um, uh, time size is uh, not limited by accuracy then you have a more robust approach now but the disadvantage is this that you have to go much slower to the surface slower to the solution uh, that means uh, the it will be the computational cost is 3 to 4 times larger as compared to the partitioned approach or the second approach the flexibility uh, of solution uh, is again less lesser so you have to go so th that is the difficulty now so traditionally what happens is this every person uh, who solves either has a structural solution solver or has a fluid solver and then he starts developing the other solver uh, and try to use both so so the second approach which is which is called as a partitioned approach basically has a Uh, has a has a partition approach that means in one domain or one a one solver you have a have a fluid solution and the other portion you have a solid solution and in those two solutions you you try to 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 have a coupling uh, strategy in between this okay so the fluid structure and our alternative so transfer the motion so how it is solved that we transfer the motion to the structural boundary to the fluid boundary update the fluid mesh advance the fluid uh, system in time and compute the new pressure convert these structural uh, new structural load to the structural solver and go ahead the advantage of this is it all it allows you uh, allows 
solve uh, software mod modularity like in one module you can solve flow and the other module you can solve for structure these methods may not be compatible to each other but the the only uh, issue is that you have to have a have a coupling solution in between which is difficult okay um and it it all only requires at least you can obviously update this uh, methodology but it requires only one fluid structure fluid uh, iteration and one structure iteration at a time at least isse zyada bhi lag sakte hain but one uh, you can have a minimum amount of that now the disadvantage of this that the any either you advance the fluid structure fluid part first and then you solve the solid part uh, part but there will always be a slight lag which creates basically the conservation issues at the interface now the commonly used schemes are uh, increasing uh, increasingly uh, increasing hence uh, you will find some strategy which are uh, use uh, energy increasing so so the commonly used schemes are basically uh, increase uh, use the energy and hence they are uh, sometimes unstable so so to reduce this instability uh, we goes we reduce the time step size which basically creates a restriction on the total uh, uh, flow time and increases the computational cost now the the most important uh, is are the interface conditions where you solve for the forces equilibrium uh, on the stress vectors at all points and you solve for the no mass uh, no mass flow across the surface or no no slip due to due to viscosity forces so these two are the boundary conditions or interface condition now how do you do it uh, you at the step step 1 you that is you solve the fluid for the next time level obtain the transition traction conditions give these traction condition to the structural solver relax the interface and then you solve for the fluid mesh and then you iterate this process so that you get a energy conserved part so this is how to you improve the coupling and the coupling is the most important thing in the partitioned approach so i use a partitioned approach now to solve these flows there are two types of approaches again the fluid flow part one is called as a body conformal approach and the other is called the emerge boundary approach now the body conformal approach is nearly available in every now in every uh, uh fem any uh, every fluid solver uh emerge boundary approach is new and it is very 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 less uh, uh very less uh, it is not uh, i think it is not available in the research license of of ansys uh, but shall in uh, i am not sure but it is it is probably available in the commercial license of the uh, solver okay sorry um yeah so now the first part is the uh, body fitted approach where you have a body interface so the, so the red side red line is basically the interface um uh, and in this uh, so if you have a normal uh, fluid flow solver so you have an interface and then you you put a, a grid mesh and you try to have nodes at all the interface and this is like a structured node but if you in a body conformal approach uh, we sacrifice orthogonality or sometimes create orthogonality externally but we have a boundary which is nicely attached to the surface so you you always know where the boundary is and you can simulate the flow so so this is a uh, so this is the approach you have a time domain approach so you for every every instant of time and in every physical space you map map this to the locations of a on a computational space domain so this basically this mapping creates an extra extra time term which is you know, which is there if you yeah i can uh, use uh, annotation sorry so i need to annotate so you can see that this term uh sir uh, yeah. uh, sir in slide show, slide show itself if you right click uh, you will get a pointer in slide show itself okay but uh, that is okay 
uh, I wanted to do this. Uh -huh, it's okay. So you can see that this term, uh, which is here, uh, you can see that there is a g yes, suffix yes, over sir, here. Yes, yes, yes. There is a g suffix over here. So this basically g um, gives you here, here. So these are mesh velocities, which are inserted in that. So this creates, and this this is the extra term which comes, and there is a this term here also, and this there is a term over here also. So these terms which I have uh, marked as the green, uh, basically used are because of the mesh uh, part. So if you use a, uh, if you use a, this is the extra term which comes out. So I don't know. Okay, and this is uh, sorry. It will. Acha, ye to hami chahiye aayega fir. We have to remove this. Uh, yeah. We have written yes. So clear content. Yeah. Okay, there is a clear content. Okay, so so you can see that from here. So these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these eight extra terms are basically over there, and these terms are calculated with the help of this. Um, uh, where is this animation? So this is the extra term which is being created. You can see, so these are calculations. So these extra term goes into that, and will help you into solving this. So, so, so this we have discussed in our paper in 2010, and you can go and to refer that. Okay. So now we have to clear content. Where is the clear content? It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yes. Okay, now I think we are ready for for further presentation. Okay. Okay, so you can see that this is a new layering approach which we created. So here we have a three layers. We divide this movement to absorb this movement into the grid. We have three layers. One layer one, layer two, and layer three. So layer three is frozen. It doesn't move with the with the velocity. Layer one is a layer which moves with the grid velocities. Uh, then layer two is basically like a sponge creation. So you you at the start of the layer two, there will be it's like the more the deformation is this, and then you decrease the deformation through that. And uh, we take into care of this. So advantage is this: the direct uh, imposition of boundary condition is there. So you can maintain the differential grid spacing near the solid fluid interface, which needs a pure point. Correct alignment of the grid is has to is there. Then you can have the limited ability, but but you have a limited uh, ability to handle very complex domains. So very complex domains you will not be able to handle with this kind of methodology. Uh, the remeshing uh, of this. Uh, can take time, you know? but uh, you can avoid remeshing. There are ways to this. So one of the ways which we showed you is the uh, way by which you can handle the uh, remeshing. Now the second part that is the immersed boundary method. Here, uh, in in this part, uh, the mesh was moving in time. Here, the mesh doesn't move in time. So mesh is freeze. The part which moves is the solid. Okay, so. So the solid fluid interface resolution is very very critical in here. So okay, so you you so you can see that um, in the background there is a fluid mesh, and in the foreground there is a solid. So so L is basically the length of the solid. Omega B refers to the solid, and then the interface is uh, is by sigma B. So you sigma B. So now uh, so these points which you show in the figure one of B. Is the point which we call as the marker cells. So these marker cells are used to generate the body or the interface on this. So inside this is all solid, 
outside this is all fluid so that is how so so sometimes you will have certain points in a fluid domain uh, who are who will be a certain flu, points in the fluid in the domain will be a fluid domain and certain points who are not in the fluid will be solid domain so but in in after some time some some points will be solid the fluid points will be become solid and solid points will, will become fluid now there are two categories uh, on uh, ibm one is called uh, um, cut shell approach or these um, uh, so two ways on which the boundary condition is employed so this is the equation one i i have so cut so the one way to impose the boundary condition is through the um, forcing functions so you can have a body force term which is right now small f can be used and this small f is basically used to write down the boundary condition on this on the flow the other uh, other way is basically to have discrete spatial operators like once uh, the solid so so the solid will basically uh, oh i don't have this uh, so so the solid solid uh, okay let me uh, use some annotations and then we will uh, it will be much more easy for you to understand so so if you have a annotation i want to draw or draw a line uh, so you have basically a line like this you have line like this so this is the grid okay and um, suppose you have an interface now and some interface is like this so the interface goes like this okay now you can see that uh, suppose this is the fluid side so this is the fluid node this is the fluid node i, I is this a, a figure uh, uh, can be seen uh, yes sir it is seen okay so this is the figure so this is the fluid node this is the fluid node this is a fluid node which is very close to the solid node and but this is a solid node and this point is the interface you need boundary condition at basically this point you do not need boundary condition at this point neither you need boundary condition in position at this point so what you do is you either use one of the ways is that you use this modified cell so earlier the cell volume was is the square now you use the modified cell part which is which will be a fraction of the total of this cell volume okay this fraction estimation is through different means some people use a cut shell approach there are variety of means to to uh, calculate this fraction okay so that is how it is uh, basically so so you basically or you use that you have this point you use this point's boundary condition and you use uh, this point's data this point's data and impose a boundary condition at this point uh, which forces the boundary condition which you have at this point i uh, understand so you have an interpolation which has to be there which which forces the boundary condition at this node because this is the compute compute node this is the compute node this is not a compute node so on this compute node or on this compute node this is there are two methodologies available uh, either you 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 modify the value at this point using this value and you know the boundary condition at this value and you modify the value at this point node so this is one way to modify it then you use a ghost cell approach where there is a cell over here and you use that this value should be here what should be the value over here if you want to have have a, a zero velocity at this boundary condition so that is how you do that uh, so again i have to use this so uh, oh, clear kar do na sir they all points so this is an example of some of the flows which uh, i have done so this is an oscillating cylinder now there is another flow this is a pitching uh, plunging airfoil which we did and there is another this is a pitching and a plunging airfoil you can see that you can see that the uh, vortex is being shed from both of the sides so it's like aap chappu chala raha hai okay so this was done through my uh, uh, moving mesh code now we also developed a emerge boundary code 
Uh, and an example of this is so this is like a cylinder, but it is the, the background mesh is a square mesh. The background mesh is basically a square mesh. So you have uh, sorry. So you can see that the this is there is a this is the flow where you the bottom is heated and the fluid goes on to the top and it is moving. So it is at beyond the critical point, and you can see that the inter the fluid velocities are uh, uh, moving. You can see. Now there is another flow uh, which we would like to show. Uh, is the airfoil uh, elliptic airfoil doing a figure eight motion? You can directly see that. So what happens when you do a figure eight motion? And uh, the moment the vortex is shed, the, there is a lo uh, loss of lift. Now the another example which we did uh, recently and we got published in uh, 2020 is the example of a vortex who induced vibration. So you, the above example is of a Tacoma bridge which fall flat. Um, and, and which is very long that uh, here we use this the other example is a, is a platform a rowing platform uh, so so there, there is a fluid line over there and you have a, have a platform over there and these moving lines again wave them uh, can then there is a bridge or pyres over there they, all of these uh, flow use FSI uh, to solve so what we did and the problem is that there is a, there is a boundary there is a damper system over here and you solve this flow uh, so you will have certain uh, uh, kind of flow structure so you, you have an elliptical equation elliptic cylinder and across that there is a flow which is going across this so this is the mesh which we used so here is it is um, this methodology you can see that uh, we have a good validation uh, we have a, a viv we, we did it a uh, vortex uh, induced vibration and rotation so, so flow is allowed to vibrate as well as rotate. And we validated this with the 2019 Van et al. paper. And you can see that uh, the altitude is uh, also well established. Plus uh, the frequent, the, uh, the F is equal to one is basically your lock-in zone. It is well also well established. Um, so you can see the more parts, CD averaging, average value of lift and drag, now you have a re, uh, U reduced. There are two two uh, non-dimensional components which comes, which is uh, reduced velocity as well as uh, reduced mass. So reduced mass is nothing but the ratio of the densities of solid and fluid, whereas uh, the uh, U reduced is basically the ratio of the frequencies associated in those flows. Now you can see a better validation over here. So this is the left side is the um, computational values of uh, the other person and the right side is ours, our uh, solutions. You can see the different types of vortex shedding which has been created and you can see it is well validated. So this is the for the two dimensional two degree of freedom system uh, validation and now you can see that uh, there's an example of a figure uh, motion. Uh, this the cylinder is basically you can see um, that is pitching as well as uh, rotating. So rotation is in. So all three degrees of freedom is, have been used. That means you can it can move in X, it can move in Y, it can rotate also. And you can see the nice rotacity uh, patterns. So this is all which we I had uh, to tell. I am. Uh, I think I am. Uh, well uh, in time, or I am ahead of time. I don't know. So. Thank you. If you have any queries, uh, thank you, Doctor Fed, for such a nice uh, session on advanced CFD. So now we will take uh, question and answer of the uh, participants. So those who will raise hand, uh, they take a question. I will unmute themselves. Uh, Doctor Gogoi, uh, Doctor Gogoi, uh, please ask the question. I have unmuted yourself. Dr. Gogoi. Dr. Jyoti Gogoi, please ask the question. Please unmute yourself. Uh, please unmute yourself.
okay i think he is not able to unmute uh, dr karimi uh, next uh, dr karimi please unmute yourself you can ask the question okay uh, uh, thank you for such a great uh, presentation fahad assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam i have uh, i am not in i am not in the field of uh, fsi but i have been always fascinated with this area uh, first thing is uh, what is the name of the software are you using are you using fluent no, no, no. Uh, i can i can use fluent i have used in fluent for a lot of things uh, but right now uh, this fsi is was done by us our own code not by any uh, software Uh, so we wrote our own code, and this is the these the the results which I showed are from our own code, not uh, from uh, any, so any other any software. Yeah, from- there are there are a lot of softwares which do that. Uh, so I prefer that uh, if you have a simple domains, you can use my use own boards. But if you have some complex <laughs> domain, MATLAB, no, no, not a MATLAB, not MATLAB. No, MATLAB can't do that. Uh, but as, uh, MATLAB can solve that those equations. that is for sure but the problem with matlab is that it uses a kern math kernel every time so at and these process are very uh, iteration intensive that at every time um, uh, iteration you have to call the solve the fluid solve system then you have to solve the solid system and you have to advance it in time so um, uh, it will require a lot of computational time uh, yeah, uh, one of my uh, students, one of my friends did a uh, did a conversion Uh, from um, uh, that was a pure fluid flow problem he, he converted his matlab code from uh, from matlab code to uh, fortran code and he got 10 times speed up so you can understand how much uh, computer intensive uh, matlab would have been so normally uh, everyone uh, who solve uh, these flows either uses c++ or fortran uh, the software with in, on which you can simulate these flows is uh, one of the software is uh, uh, ansys fluent uh, you can solve them uh, uh, on them then there is a um, uh, ansys cfx on which also you can solve them there is adena also which is which people lot of people use for uh, fluid structure interaction uh, so comsol i am not sure about that but these three you can use uh, okay sir Uh, any other questions sir uh, should i go for next participant uh, mr ajay kumar pande mr ajay kumar pande you have not uh, uh, turn on your uh, uh, mic please turn on your mic please unmute yourself mr ajay kumar pande you raise the hand but you have not unmuted yourself mr ajay kumar pande i think he is not able to do that any other person who want to raise their hand uh, otherwise some questions are there in chat box uh, i can uh, read these questions on behalf of the participant please go ahead uh-huh. uh one question is from dr navin sharma in chat box yeah, yeah. Uh, which equation we have to use for finding pressure distribution inside a channel from velocity field information you can use uh, poisson's equation Poisson's equation. Pressure, 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 Poisson equation. Uh, mm-hmm. It is uh, an elliptic equation. If you have velocity, you can solve that. I think in somewhere in uh, my flow in my uh, PPT, I have shown the pressure Poisson equation. Yeah, but but that is for 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 the pressure correction. If you re, uh, if you have uh, if, okay, let me go go back to the uh, the uh, PPT. Uh, uh, the, is this the new PPT uh, visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible. Uh, so if you if i go with that uh, there was some place uh, uh, this equation was shown yeah here it is so uh, is this uh, visible yes sir visible uh, if i uh, let, let only me... only last slide thank you slide okay okay okay, okay. thank you slide that is why i ask you no this news yeah. slide is visible or not so i have to screen share again new share and uh, this is the new share Okay, so the this this is what uh, visible? Yes, sir. Visible, visible. DNS code optimization. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so this is this this part. Uh, the equation del square. I will just annotate that. Uh, so, so this is the equation. 
this is del square p prime is equal to del dot u star upon delta t. Now this is the pressure correction Poisson equation. What you need to go to the pressure Poisson equation is that you change the correction velocity to the pressure velocity and star velocity to the variable velocity. Just you remove a star and u star, you will get you you. It is the same uh, pressure equation. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. pressure Poisson equation. And uh, uh, another question is from same participant, Dr. Naveen Sharma. Yeah. That is again same question he is asking. Yeah. How can we use critical point theory to extract vertical structures in CFD simulation? So discuss with him now. Uh, so, Mr. Dr. Naveen Sharma, if you are able to hear us, uh, you can uh, uh, put some point on this. What is critical point theory, Dr. Naveen Sharma? Okay. I have unmuted you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a nice session, sir. Actually, my Thank point you. is like uh, I have uh, some data related with uh, the flow field data, you know, okay. velocity information. Yeah. And actually, I want to just uh, use that uh, experimental data to convert okay. in that pressure field distribution. Okay. Okay. So the point is like uh, I have just uh, data of like instantaneous instantaneous data of 500 images. Fine. So I should uh, go with instantaneous uh, pressure distribution or that averaging, whatever average final uh, information uh, I'm getting, I have to convert that one. My love, you want to convert this, uh, it is a PIV data? Yeah. Okay, if it is a PIV data, you can calculate uh, instantaneous, you can go with instantaneous also and you can go with the average. So if you go with the average, it will give you an average pressure. Uh, pressure. And if you go with instantaneous, you will get an instantaneous pressure. So we should go coding on MATLAB or some. Yeah, you can do uh, you said on MATLAB. MATLAB. No, no, you can do on MATLAB. This this kind of processor. This is a one-time job, no? Yeah, yeah. It will run for uh, one or two hours. If we, if it it will take time. I don't. I'm not sure because I have not done uh, uh, PIV data analysis. Uh, so. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, not, uh, and the another question is regarding like uh, critical point theory. No, we have to extract the flow structures. Either it is a node or something focus or some streamlines emerging some from somewhere like that. So we are using those things in CFD simulations also to extract the critical points. Uh, no, we don't use critical uh, this kind of uh, theory because uh, since you have velocities, uh, mm. you can directly calculate uh, streamlines. Uh, critical nice. points, uh, uh, stream point, streamlines is always there. No? Everywhere. Yeah, streamlines there. Things. But when again, you, like, uh, like if, it, if it is a three-dimensional flow, uh, since uh, since in PIV you are doing either two-dimensional or three-dimensional, so two-dimensional data of a three-dimensional flow field. That is what PIV. If you are doing a 2D PIV or yeah. uh, stereoscopic PIV, you are using basically two-dimensional data of a three-dimensional flow field. So you do not know the la the next uh, velocity component. Um, so that is why you have to interpolate on that or you use some critical, um, some theory to do that. But if you are doing in uh, CFD, you have all the three velocity fields. You can directly calculate the, those uh, streamlines and stream traces and all those things. To, um, to calculate the structures, as you say yeah. that, as you want to calculate. So in my uh, PPT, I have showed you, uh, you we calculate, uh, sometimes you use a statistical way that is like POD, or you use a uh, current structure calculations or turbulent structure calculation. You use a uh, pressure or you use a uh, uh, vorticity uh, methodology. You H or Q criteria you calculate and from that you can calculate that. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Namin. Uh, there, I, I think we can take one last question. Uh, that question is from Dr. Shamlal Sharma. How can we define Eulerian and Lagrangian mesh in the field? In the field? Yeah, that I think I missed uh, that part. Um, so if you have a um, Lagrangian, uh, so if you are doing FSI, uh, the structure simulation is doing is used by uh, arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian form. So, so in FSI, we normally use a arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian approach. Uh, in fluid flow equations. Uh, is, are basically in the Eulerian frame. So you have an Eulerian frame, uh, but the structure equation is basically in the Lagrangian frame. So you, that is how you do do it. So the solid uh, equation is to be, has, 
is written in the lagrangian frame and the fluid equations which we which we are showing is basically in a uh, in a in a eilerian frame so that is how ale is done okay sir uh thank you dr shyamlal sharma uh you asked good question uh one question is from ajay kumar pande he has raised the hand but he is not able to unmute himself okay, uh, dr ajay kumar pande if you are uh, uh, if you want to hear if you are able to hear me please unmute yourself dr ajay kumar pande i think not meanwhile, so it's okay sir uh, meanwhile somebody wrote in the chat box that uh, something you said you will show in the end and uh, yeah 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 okay <laughs> so there is a uh, uh, let me uh, so there are a lot of uh, videos which i we uh, require use in our simulations so that's why i was uh, trying to figure them out yeah uh, by the way there is was a one question i read it and a difference between open foam and uh, uh, fluid flow okay there yes uh, uh this i i need to clear first this, this is not allowing me to do anything uh, uh, clear all drawings okay and i need to stop this okay so let me uh, go to the वो रेड वाला क्या है वो क्लोज इज इट क्लोज वॉट इज नीतीश नीतीश है क्या uh, मेरे ख्याल में सर एनोटेशन को कैंसिल करना होगा यू हैव टू कैंसिल द एनोटेशन नो नो आई हैव कैंसिल्ड योर ऑलरेडी नाउ आई हैव ओपन दिस रिज्यूम शेयर न्यू शेयर एंड दिस इज द गुड टाइम सो दिस आई वांटेड टू शो यू दिस इज विजिबल नाउ यस सर यस so this is a video uh, of three simulations are there uh, one is at ari tau 100 160 and 300 this i promise to show you in the end and uh, if you see this um, there is a uh, uh, you said that uh, right click i can have a pointer right uh, yes sir uh, right, uh, right click there may be a pointer not getting a pointer okay um, so okay. so what i wanted to show you you, you can see that uh, yes we, you can this is a simulation of a square duct um, and we this we got uh, recently published in uh, um, uh, springer nature and uh, another paper in physics of fluid in 2020 um, just recently so this is a there is a mushroom like structure which is going uh, uh, like uh, going which is going up and as you increase the reynolds number uh, these mushrooms uh, quickly disappear the scale is very very small okay this is the vorticity which i wanted to show you okay so uh, now aja the the question of uh, open foam and uh, fluent uh, open foam is uh, some it, it, it is 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 an open foam so open word is basically that uh, everybody can use it no money has to be paid and uh, it is a very good software it gives you a lot of control on your part and it is fast uh, it is also a second order code uh, which is uh, fluent is also second order code but to use fluent you have to give money uh, here you do not have don't have to give money and uh, nearly uh, 
not nearly uh, the capability of 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 open form is not uh, much less as compared to um, uh, fluent but obviously it, since it is a paid software it has more capability um, than so if you have uh, uh, some problems uh, which can be solved uh, by and they have given nice tutorials uh, it is a linux based software so you need to have a linux on your system uh, but uh, now no 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 Uh, but now there is a windows and gui interface which has come out lekin the windows and gui in, in interface is costly like it, it it requires money uh, but uh, linux version is free uh, for all and it has nice uh, uh, tutorials and if if you are if your problem is uh, near to those uh, tutorials uh, that will then it will be very easy for you to solve and it has lot of uh, uh, power and it gives you you can use uh, uh, those solvers uh, like it, they they are you know, open libraries you know they are, they are li like li built in like libraries so you can use a library uh, plus i would like to mention uh, this uh, that uh, i with uh, professor uh, verma uh, nk verma uh, of, of iit kanpur uh, we have developed an open source code uh, uh, which is which, uh, a code which is called a saras s a r a s uh, so Uh, this is going to be an open source code, and uh, uh, if you would like to use it, uh, our publication is just now coming. Once the publication comes, uh, uh, we will uh, be uh, or we will be advertising it more. Uh, since uh, so that is why I didn't include the, those results in over here. It is a very very fast code, very very structured, optimized. Uh, much larger optimization than which we had uh, in in this code uh, with Hamid. um and it is an open source and you can use it it is fully body fitted code you can use in any modern system uh so you can simulate an r3 to z problem system also you can do say simulate an xyz coordinate system and we are happy to um uh, to uh, to welcome uh, those people who want to develop the code so we are only uh, some handful of people who are doing it uh, but if you are uh, if you would like to come with us Uh, we can help you it is a very very fast code we have uh, tested it till 1024 processors uh, on uh, cows machine uh, and it is works very well uh, very fast as compared to other codes it is it has a multi grid uh, solver attached to that uh, and uh, it is very fast so so if you if anyone of you who wants to uh, who has interest in developing codes it is a c++ Uh, base code and if you have certain knowledge so we are we are, we are help we will be like to welcome you you to develop this code uh, with us uh, it's a joint program with the, the with the amu and uh, it kanpur department of physics these are mkv uh, uh, mahend kumar verma is an uh, swan jayanti fellowship winner from uh, department of physics he works in, mostly in uh, turbulence uh, relay but not turbulence so we will be very helpful we will be will like uh, this to happen if you if anybody of you would like to develop it with us then it would be great had uh, although yes. time is up very quick ah, yeah. uh, i know I very know, know. quick uh, small question ji ji bilkul like when we in material science uh, deal with uh, plasticity yeah plastic, it's actually flow yeah it's actually of metals yeah deformation flow deformation rather than uh, that is uh, molten flow that is different yeah this is flow due to deformation yeah. so uh, what kind of equations uh, and uh, flow equations and uh, any 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 suggestion yeah uh, there are a lot of um, uh, modeling has been done on uh, plastics mm -hmm. not uh, navier stokes can't be solved over there directly but uh, mm -hmm. you can modify the uh, Mm -hmm. see it, it's basically the see the stress uh, the cauchy stress equation balance equation it will always ha, be there ha, ha, so that you can take uh, yeah you can supply the stress vector from the cauchy stress balance equation in the stress balance equation for the plastic module and you can simulate mm -hmm. the flow uh, okay. so that is how you will do do it that uh, but uh, there is a the visco plastic solutions are occurring and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a good thing but you but since mm. again uh, plasticity you you can get back uh, it, plastic is it is a field in itself ha it's a field in itself it's, it's a mm. difficult flow so it's, 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 uh 
time is up uh, uh, thank you uh, thank you dr fahed for such a wonderful session on advanced cfd uh, we have seen that how complicated is fluid flow phenomena and it is very difficult to generate experimental setup uh, for all the fluid phenomena because it is very costly affair so cfd tools numerical method tools are very <coughs> efficient tools uh, to find the differential equations and solve the differential equations obtained out of the fluid phenomena so i hope that uh, this session is very motivating and informative for all the participants and we have learned a lot from this uh, thank you thank you once again dr uh, fahed and also i thank participant to participate in today's session uh, now i will request principal sir to say a few words in vote of thanks to our uh, session expert uh, first of all thanks uh, to all of you who are present uh for being uh, present here and uh, uh, all the team members of uh, dr deepak for contributing so nicely to make it successful and every day is better than the previous one so and uh, finally dr fahed uh, thanks thanks a lot i myself learned and i still, still remember those uh, days when we used to debate <laughs> experimental versus computational <laughs> by today by hearing your presentation of today's i i regret that i didn't uh, go for uh, uh, the computational side i should have <laughs> thanks with that i would like to thank you thanks a lot sir Thank, thanks no sab uh, <laughs> for uh, giving me an opportunity for, formally i need to thank that so the uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me opportunity to speak and the teacher always wants to speak what he has done um, uh, to, to, and, uh, and again uh, we are looking for if you if you have any queries you can always uh, email me uh, and uh, i will share uh, uh, my presentation with you i have no issues with that and uh, if if anybody wants to have a, a collaborate collaborate for work for any kind of problems which they have uh, we are happy to uh, i will be happy to assist you uh, in any situation uh, even uh, for any position if you like uh, you can come to my lab and uh, work uh, i have uh, some systems which you can use access to machines softwares uh, we have uh, in our lab Uh, so you can always come to in our lab uh, and all all of you are welcome to come to the lab and uh, work uh, so you can mail me uh, if you would like uh, or mail sir uh, you can uh, get me you in touch with me and i will be happy to uh, have any problem solved uh, with you uh, thank you thank you sir uh, thank you sir thank you very much sir uh, dear participants uh, we have sent a sent a link uh, of a feedback form please fill the feedback form as soon as possible because we are uh, close to end the session today's session uh, please fill the feedback form the link of the feedback form is sent uh, in the chat box okay uh, so i will take a leave then okay uh -huh. sir thank you sir thank you thank you thank you very much thank you very much